Hey, we're live. Like I was saying, that, that third round was incredible, the way he related to the audience and he related to the fans. Because fucking for the last three years and for the whole dude's whole life, that's what he's been doing. A lot of that shit doesn't get represented in battle rap. A lot of it's about how fucking flashing and how fucking amazing and how fucking tight we are. And not a lot of it is about how tight you guys are for making this shit happen. So I'm going to pass uh, uh, the microphone off to the man himself 24-7. If you're going off, if you see anybody else, send him this way too. Most definitely. Yeah. All right. Da, 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 da. We got 24-7 camera buckles in the building. Uh, this is great. Uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm Chris. We've only met very briefly. Uh, I saw you battle. Hands, yeah. it's good to meet you. Good to meet you. It's funny. Uh, out of the 32 people on this card, I think you're the only one I haven't met before. It's crazy. I tend to live in the shadows around the same places where the Batcave exists. You'll never know. So you just battled? Just battled. You made your return. When was your last battle before this? Blackout 2, so I don't know what the date was, but as far as events go, it was exactly three Blackout years. Blackout 2, so three 2012 years. or so. Yeah, three years. Okay. Uh, how have things changed since that day? For me or Battle Rap? Let's start uh, with uh, Battle Rap. Um, well, it's gotten bigger, obviously. We weren't on a stage at a theater. Um, I mean... It's pretty much mainstream now, man. You know what I mean? And I don't mean that in, like, the bad way. I just mean everybody's talking about it. The industry's involved. <laughs> Such a good performance. <laughs> we, we got people interrupting the interview. We're good. Yeah. No, nah, but, um, I mean, I've kind of been saying that I don't really watch anymore, and I, I really don't. I mean, I watch from time to time, but... When I think watching battles, I think back to when grind time was coming up and you were waiting for the release dates. And Avocado was always yeah. late. And the fans was always mad. I was one of them fans like, God damn it. Who is this fuckface not putting up these goddamn battles? Right. It's, it's funny that you that you say that you haven't been watching battles as much recently because when Dan and I were talking about you, we were talking about how your style is a very timeless and classic style, uh, which kind of harkens back to the, the early grind time days that you were a part of, right. of like just really saying to your opponent, like, here's why you're whack, and let me explain to you uh, in a way that everyone can understand. And let right. me, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, do you think that that style, or what are your thoughts on that style in general, I guess? Well, if we're speaking on my style, I love it. It's my motherfucking style. I go to sleep with it. I hold it at night. I wake it up in the morning. I say, how you doing? I'm glad you're still here. Right. Uh, you know what uh, I mean? <laughs> um, but, I mean, there are still cats that, that rock like that. I mean, I'm not going to act like I was always directed at my opponent. I would have some irrelevant, you know, random punchlines about pulling somebody's girl's fallopian tubes out of her vagina and passing them around the crowd um but that's one thing i sharpened up when i came here i was like no bullshit this time everything is directed at my opponent i wrote over 15 pages for her Holy smokes. 15 pages of 15 pages. That motherfucker. yeah 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 on some cannabis uh, shit yeah. <laughs> uh let's talk about how you and er came together because that's i i've made predictions i, I would have never paired the two of you up right well Organic wanted me to battle him years ago. Okay. Years ago. And uh, for some hey, reason... Sorry, but let me just clarify. Not that I would never pair you up. I would have never guessed that no, right, they, right, they right. would have no, no. been And most up. people, yeah, when that happened, everybody's like, what the fuck? Um, but it's a cool matchup. That's why it's cool. You know, and it, it's not necessarily, even though it's something people would never predict, it's not necessarily a style clash. Because he's punch heavy. He is. He usually got, gets a reaction every, every couple bars. But, um... Organic wanted me to battle him a few years ago. It didn't happen. And then when I was in Atlanta, right. um, I, I saw her. Right. You and were, I, uh, for Don't Flop Atlanta, you were in yeah, the I, audience there. Yeah, I just went because Sonny and Ness was battling. Right. Um, and obviously, I wanted to make the racist blog. You know, obviously. Right. That's the only reason I drove there. Uh, um, we'll get to that, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, I mentioned to her, I was like, yo, you know, uh, Travis wanted me to battle you years ago. And he was like, I would have murdered you, bro. I was like, oh, word. And then we just talked shit. And then uh, I hit up Organic as a joke because I thought there was no way he was going to do it. And it, Organic was like, let's do it. So we're like, fuck it. Nice. Uh, and tell me your thoughts 
on, uh, you, you mentioned, you know, how things have changed for both battling and, and for you. How have things changed for you in the last three years? Well, like I said in my third round, I'm a teacher now. I teach high school English. If any of my kids are watching this, you got a test on Monday. You better be studying. We covered Animal Farm, Russian Revolution. There's no reason you shouldn't pass. But anyways, um, for two years, I was doing straight-up construction. Okay. Like, I was working with my girl's dad. It's weird that he mentioned me, like, moving in, like, with, with my lady's folks. Right? It wasn't. It was because I moved to a new place, and we were waiting to get a, a, our own apartment. So they were like, yeah, just come here while, you know, whatever. Uh, I don't remember. Fire rebuttals right there. Yeah. I don't ever remember me telling him. I, I mean, he, he, he obviously. He that. He obviously embellished quite a bit, which is, you know, comes to the territory. Um, but, yeah, so I did that, and um, I was substitute teacher for a while. Okay. That's one of the reasons I took this battle. I got to be honest. I needed money. And I know that sounds bad, yeah, but fuck y'all. I did this shit for 10 years, and I ain't make a fucking dime. You know what I mean? And I got rent to pay. Mm. So is so. this a return? Because there's, there's a lot of money out there in the scene, it seems like, these days. You know, you just had a, a dominant return performance. But Not it's, dom I won't say dominant, but you did great in it. Um, I intended this to be... I always intended to be a one-off. Okay. Especially now. Just because, unfortunately, like two weeks ago, like the whole high school that I teach at, not just my class, the whole high school found out that I used to do this. <laughs> and, like, I can't keep coming up here... That also influenced my rounds, you know what I mean? Did Mr. Bike Rack? No. The one kid came in, he was like 24-7. I was like, yo, you call me anything but Mr. Buckles. You get written up. You get written up on the spot. Infraction. What do the students think about it? Huh? What do the students think about it? Well, obviously, that was like, if I was their age and I found out my English teacher did this shit, like what the fuck? You know what I mean, um, but I mean they they think it's cool, but you know I kind of got to shut that down. I can't really be talking with them about that, um, you know, because some parents will see that shit, and you know, even if the parents see it right now, damn, I gotta watch the curse words. Uh, <laughs> but um, we're on a twenty second delay, so can we cut yeah, them out? Right. There's still like four yo, seconds. Yo, Go bring ahead. bring the beat man in. Bring the beat man in. Need you. Hit that space bar. Go. Go. But, uh, yeah. Um, all right. And then uh, what do you think about the, the rest of the event? Have you seen the other battles so far? Yo, so far, man. It's been straight. I kind of missed Chilla and Bullets because, you know, that's the part where you're getting in that. Right. Home. But, yo, I love Skelly and Marv was good. It was yeah. a good way to start out the event. Absolutely. Uh, and how does it feel to be kind of like returning back to this scene? You know, there's there must be a lot of faces that you remember, but like there's probably a lot of new faces there as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, I know everybody on the card. Um, there's definitely a lot of battlers I don't know, but it is crazy because like I haven't met a lot of these cats, especially the URL cats. Right. So of course, the time I meet them is after this whole racist thing happens. Right. So, I mean, I just can you just explain that to anyone who doesn't know what's going on? It was what it was like you were joking around. Yeah, I was joking around. Um, we were doing an episode of Bad Bars, which is where you make fun of people's bars and shit. And I just made a couple offhand racist jokes. And to be truthful, I made way more that got cut out. But there's a reason. There's a reason though. Like I said, what's the reason? Before we did that, I was like, yo. I'm going to play the ignorant American okay. because that would be funny on a British channel. And we were in the South. Okay. Like, like there was, I mean. The impact in the room. And yeah, Impact was in the room. Earl was in the room at one point. I mean, like, and anybody that knows me, you know what I mean? Like, no Mar excuse for racism. No, absolutely not. There's no room for it. But I learned that. I learned that. Once, when, I, when I went back and I watched it, I went, damn, that does kind of look bad. Because it's two racist jokes with 20 minutes in between with nothing that would right. connect. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. That's just my sense of humor. Like, not just race jokes, but, like, you know, I think anything could be funny. Do you have um, anything racist to say right now? Anything racist to say right now? How much time you got, buddy? 
How much yeah. fucking time? I'll, I'll just head to the bathroom and you can just say racist things for the rest of the day if you want. Um, nah. Hey, hey, what what they call the first black guy? No. Nah, but um, That's it was funny because Marv One came up to me. The first say? thing he said, he was like, yo, I heard you was a racist now. And I was like, yeah, I heard that too, man. But it's, it is what it is, man. Like I said, anybody that knows me, they knows I was just fucking around. I shouldn't have done it. Which is especially, you know, on camera and shit. But like I told people, you know, real racists would never say that shit on camera. Yeah. Real racism is behind closed doors, mm. under white sheets, so you can't see people's faces. But it is what it is. I learned my lesson, man. Go All right, we got too serious. Let's talk about Battle Rock. All right, yeah. Uh, who else are you looking forward to see, uh, seeing on this card here? Um, let's see. I'm trying to run down the battles. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to what Pat has to say to Sharon. Because, um... Uh, yeah, let's get some predictions. Uh, Pat versus Sharon, first of all. You want predictions? Yeah. Oh, just the main events, I guess, right? Yeah. Because I don't know. Right. Anyway, right? Wink, wink. Um, I think Stay should beat Sharon. But you never know what you're going to get with Sharon. The crowd up here, they love him. And I thought it was interesting, actually. Uh, early on the, in the night, they were saying, like, you know, I think whoever was introing it and was saying, you know, who do you think uh, is Pac going to win? Cheer if you think Pac's going to win. Cheer if you think Jerome's going to win. And it seemed like they got equal yeah, cheers. They both have really big fan bases. Mm. Um, I think Sharon is just always going to have that underdog effect because we know him. As the the robot arms shit from the the, the past, and uh, he's went on this journey from that to where he's at now on BT and all this. I mean, he's come a long way, but he's still Sharon, you know. Like he still looks like he does, you know. No matter what he says, it's coming out of that face. Right. Um, but I would I would put my money on Pat, but you never know. All right. Oh uh, man, what Hitman and Shotty? That one's tough to call because that's completely different <laughs> rapid Sorry, styles. Here. Sorry, guys. Oh, yeah. Um, have a beer. I got, I got one. It's I got one. All right. I'll um, take it on. Sorry. Oh. Avocado. Straight. <laughs> All right. Let's get, beers. Uh, let's get Poison Pen in uh, here. So uh, you've had enough of me? Is that uh, what it is? Nah, you replaced me with a black stuff, guy yeah. to, to balance it out? Black hey, guy from Brooklyn? Spend the whole day here, Cameron. Come on. I know. I might but slip up and great, say Great to meet you. Yeah, appreciate absolutely. It. And uh, great great battle. I thought that was, you know. Thank you, man. That's appreciate it. Ken. We We're going to get boys, man. Yep. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, 24-7. Switch it up. You guys ready? That was a clinic.